Thank you for watching ECSO News on Blob TV, where facts matter. I'm Amber Southerd. And I'm Major Andrew Hobbs. We'd like to begin tonight's episode by sending our condolences to the Orlando Police Department and the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Both agencies lost law enforcement officers this week in the line of duty, and our thoughts and our prayers are with both of those agencies. And you can run, but you can't hide. Wanted fugitive Latonio Marcel Jenner learned that lesson the hard way. Jenner is wanted for robbing several banks and businesses in Arkansas. He was located in a hotel room on Pensacola Beach after deputies spotted his vehicle. Jenner was taken into custody without incident. Don't miss out on our next Neighborhood Watch Academy. It is a one-night class that offers valuable insight on crime prevention and gives you the tools to start your own Neighborhood Watch. The class will be from 5 to 9 p.m. on January 17th at the Sheriff's Office Administration Building, located at 1700 West Leonard Street. Well, it's that time again in the show where we bring on Deputy Melanie Peterson to talk about Crime Stoppers. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> so what do we have this week that we're highlighting? Well, our three fugitives for the week uh, that we have is one is Brandon Egerton. He is wanted from Escape for Work Release, and he doesn't have a bond, mm -hmm. which I, I never understand that one. That one's kind of <laughs> dumb. You're given your, an opportunity to stay out of jail, and, and you just walk away from it. There so. you go, messing up again. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Please call us if you know him. Absolutely. Uh, the second fugitive is Sensory Bledsoe. She is wanted for grand theft, over 300, but less than five. Um, she's been wanted for a little over a year now. So we definitely, uh, someone out there does know where she's at and give us a call and, and let's get her picked up. And uh, our third and final um, fugitive for this segment is uh, Roy Cleary. He's wanted for forgery. Um, Roy would go to different hospitals uh, complaining, trying to get a prescription for uh, opiates. Mm -hmm. um, and at this time he forged his name, gave a false name. Ah, so. well. So if anybody recognizes any of the three people that we had on tonight's episode, what, what can they do? Absolutely. Well, um, we make it real easy. They have four ways they can um, provide tips to Crime Stoppers. They can call us at our 24-hour-a-day number at 433-STOP. That's the most common form. Um, they also can text their tip to Crime Stoppers at 274-637 or CRIMES for those who can't remember the number. Mm -hmm. uh, in the body of the message, we ask that they put GCCS and uh, they can even upload pictures and videos or they can visit the Gulf Coast Crime Stopper webpage at gulfcoastcrimestoppers.org. A right-hand corner of that uh, page, they can click on the submit a tip. Um, but for those that have an iOS or an Android device, they can also go into their app store and upload the Tip Submit app. And from there, it'll walk them through. Uh, anytime you provide a tip to Crime Stoppers, you're given a number, a tip number, and they can check the status of that tip every Monday between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. with me. And you were talking about uploading pictures and video. That, that's interesting. So let's say I'm at Walmart mm -hmm. and I think I, I've seen one of your kiosks that are placed around the county. So I recognize one of the people where I've seen tonight's episode. And I'm like, hey, I'm not kind of sure if this is that person or not. I could take a picture with my phone and upload it. Absolutely. And they can, they can attach it to their tip. And I encourage people to do that because, uh, as you and I both know, people change their appearances all the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one person may have had a mug shot from three years ago and had long hair. Well, now they don't have long hair anymore. So it always helps us and the deputies, of course, anybody um, out there uh, in patrol that can pick these people up. It's nice to have an updated photo of them. Absolutely. So what you'll do is you'll kind of look at that photo. We'll kind of go from there and tell, and they'll get a, a number still assigned to them that way. Absolutely. And I always a attach any photos sent to me to the Crime Stopper tip itself. So what they send me, patrol gets. Oh, so, absolutely. I want I want to keep patrol as up to date as well. So I don't want to I don't just read it, but of course it's 100% anonymous, so no one knows. Thank you so much for joining no us. Again, if you recognize anybody in tonight's episode or anybody on one of our kiosks that are placed around the county, please call Crime Stoppers at 433-STOP or you can always call the Escambia County Sheriff's Office at 436-9620. Last week, Sheriff David Morgan was sworn into office to serve a third term as Escambia County Sheriff. Judge Kira Smith officiated the ceremonies after Sheriff Morgan gave a speech thanking those who made this third term possible and the men and women of Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Now just reflect on that for a few moments. Any of you have a job like that? Any of you have a job to where you can roll up on a bad situation 
and not immediately retreat? You know, as I tell folks today, if one of us unfortunately comes out of a restaurant this afternoon and there's an altercation in the parking lot and someone assaults us, we have so many options as civilians as to how to handle that situation. We can become aggressive and respond, or we can retreat and get in our car and drive off. You know, please understand when a young man or a young woman shows up in a sheriff's office vehicle, dressed as a law enforcement officer with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office, they only have one option. And that option is to resolve as quickly and as efficiently and as legally as they can that situation. They can't leave because your personal safety and risk is what's at risk and at hand. That's the job that these folks take on every day, probably unknowingly because I think the, the post-traumatic stress would be you know, off the scale if they didn't, if you lingered on it too long. But that's the job that they do for us each and every day in Escambia County. They also have behind them a capable command staff and a staff of administrative folks that also must be there to support the operational element at the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. They also are second to none. And then we have our partners in law enforcement, Pensacola Police Department, of which we're so honored today now to have one of the former chiefs of police working for us, Chief Chip Simmons being replaced with Chief David Alexander. Chief, thank you for being here today. And before I go any further, I also would be remiss if I didn't point out a couple of gentlemen in this audience that I'm so proud to have an association with. Retired Army Command Sergeant Major Ray McKnight. Sergeant McKnight, thank you for you and your wife being here today. And so let me tell you a little bit about David Morgan's leadership and management perspective on things. Those two gentlemen that I just introduced to you and also my wife Susan, who I'm honored to have here today, Susan. Thank you so much for coming. Okay. And maybe you need to write this down and think about it because I think our government and our country would operate uh, a lot differently if this was something that was possibly taught in leadership and management schools. These folks watch me every day. Every day. Every day. I don't know how, as an elected official, you could violate that trust. When I have a veteran come to me and tell them how proud they are of me that I left the military service and now I'm serving with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office and that we're proud of you for what you've done and for what you've accomplished. That's not a cross that I bear. That's an understanding that I have so many people that care about me and pray for me and want to ensure that I continue to do the right thing. And so when I make extremely difficult situations involving people's careers, the direction of the Escambia County Sheriff's Office, always at the back of my mind is an understanding that I'm being watched. Not from a legal perspective, we can all follow the statutes, but from a moral and ethical perspective, that they're depending upon me to assess a situation, balance all the facts that I have before me, and make a correct, right, and just decision. That's what you elected me to do, is those very things. Not to be the smartest man in the room, not to be the best law enforcement officer, but to come to work every day and do the very best job that I can do. And so for the next four years, as the Sheriff of Escambia County, that is what I promise you. I cannot describe to you what an honor it is to hold elected office to have that level of trust placed in me by the citizens of Escambia County. And so I will tell you the motto of officer training school in the Air Force, always with honor, always with honor. We will approach the next four years exactly the same way, always with honor. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here today. Thank you. Also sworn in last week, two deputy sheriffs, six deputy sheriff trainees, and 12 Pensacola Police Department officers. And congratulations to the newly promoted First Lieutenant Simmons, First Lieutenant Small, Captain Dixon, Captain Gilmore, Captain Greer, Captain Von Ansbach Young, Lieutenant Colonel Ron Ross, Colonel Quinata, and Commander Mark Jackson. If you would like to become a member of the ECSO family, you are in luck. Applications for our Deputy Sheriff Trainee Les position will be accepted online through Sunday, January 15th. This position is posted on the Sheriff's Office website at EscambiaSO.com. Click on the jobs link to apply 
or for a description of the position, including examples of duties and minimum qualifications, please visit EscambiaSO.com. We need your help locating Kevin Pechikoff. He is wanted for sexual battery on a child under the age of 12. If you have any information on his whereabouts, contact Crime Stoppers at 433-STOP or the Escambia County Sheriff's Office at 436-9620. And he was missing for 76 years and finally laid to rest here in Escambia County. U.S. Sailor Walter Solly's remains were identified recently through DNA testing after losing his life in the line of duty fighting at Pearl Harbor in 1941. His remains arrived at the Pensacola Airport last week, then escorted by ECSO deputies. It, it is um, very exciting and we, uh, you know, we're, we're not really in a grief mode. We're more in a celebration mode because this is a homecoming after all these years to be able to bring him back home. Um, so that's kind of the way we feel. Even though it is very emotional, we're, we're really happy. And then again today here to see the outpouring uh, of not only you'll see it from the community, uh, but from the family members, many who were not even alive when this, uh, this sailor lost his life. Um, so it is, it's, it's a wonderful part to be part of the, uh, the military, part of the Navy, and part of a family that will be with you forever. He was buried at Barrancas National Cemetery. We need your help locating the people in this week's Missing Persons segment. 16-year-old Carly Ann Wilson was reported missing on November 28, 2016. Carly is wanted here in Escambia County and is considered a habitual runaway. 17-year-old Daniel Jamie Goodrider was last seen on December 9, but was reported missing to the Escambia County Sheriff's Office on December 29. Goodrider is also wanted, but this is the first time he has been reported as a runaway. 16-year-old Christopher Von Shea Moore was reported missing to the Escambia County Sheriff's Office on January 7. This is the first time Christopher has been reported as a runaway. If you have any information about the people we've highlighted in tonight's episode, please contact Crime Stoppers at 433-STOP or the Escambia County Sheriff's Office Dispatch at 436-9620. It's officially that time of year again. Mardi Gras season's upon us. Deputy Chief Simmons was honored to be a part of the blessing of the floats at 12th night. This year's celebration was a little different. The rain kept the floats from showing up, but that was okay. Each Mardi Gras crew was blessed instead. Do you like seeing events on our Facebook page? Well, our explorers have decided to start their own Facebook page. For those of you who don't know about our Explorer program, it's voluntary and sponsored by the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Its purpose, to educate and involve young people in law enforcement. Members gain a working knowledge of police work and have the opportunity to serve their community. Explorers receive training in patrol, procedure, first aid, honor guard, criminal law, crime prevention, fingerprinting, arrest techniques, drug abuse prevention, firearm safety, crime scene techniques, and more. So don't forget to follow them on Facebook. And for more information about the program, contact 436-9916 or 436-9939. And we now have a new way for you to stay in contact with the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. Follow us on Instagram. We have a bunch of deputies who are helping to participate with our Instagram page. Check it out, see what they are up to, and of course, you can always follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you stick around for Ask the Sheriff. I'm Escambia County Sheriff David Morgan, and thank you for watching Ask the Sheriff. This is your chance to ask me any questions you want answered about the ECSO. Our team hits the streets again, and here are some of the questions you asked. Jimmy asked about the Perdido Key substation and the, and the closing of that substation and the reassignment of officers. Jimmy, unfortunately, and I can speak to this issue now because the campaign is over, prior to this I could not have mentioned that. Uh, that was a rumor uh, that was started, uh, you know, and it was purely politics. I won't name names as to who started it. Uh, but unfortunately, as an elected official, I spend an inordinate amount of time correcting misinformation uh, and basically hateful rumors. And that's one of those. What we've done for your substation, uh, it's still open. The officers still work out of your substation. They go there to make calls, to write reports. And when they make uh, you know, arrests or citizen contact, you may be taken to the Petito Key substation. 
what we do now for the north and south areas of Escambia County, you know, where the dividing line is for north and south, all of our officers now muster at Precinct 3, which is down off of Gulf Beach Highway. Now, all that means is, is that all the officers that work the south end of Escambia County, where you live, now all get together, get the same pass-ons, uh, they get to work together, they get now to overlap all the key districts, and you in actuality have more officers working the Perdido key area and available for response than you did prior to the structural change. Uh, again, there's no truth to the rumor that you have less deputies out there. Uh, we've spoken to Commissioner Doug Underhill at great length about this. I know that he's also uh, in some of the Facebook pages and the, some of the local blogs has even talked to the issue that he's spoken to me directly about that, which is a true statement. Uh, we would never, Jimmy, and again, I always ask folks, if you kind of step back with many of these rumors that you hear and take a deep breath and think through the process, you know, what would be the benefit and what would be the point to me to relieving Perdido Key of the current officers that they currently have. You know, crime doesn't stop in any area of Escambia County, and most assuredly not out in Perdido Key. So of what benefit would, would it be to me as the sheriff or to the citizens of Escambia County for me, again, to lessen the patrol coverage that you have out in Perdido Key? And the answer is nothing. Uh, you know, I'm not about being politically spiteful. Uh, you know, I've never done that, and I certainly am not going to start now. And I can assure you that you have as much or more coverage in Perdido Key than you did prior to this structural change. Uh, this went through a staffing process with my chief deputy, Eric Haynes, uh, Commander Weston, who heads up the patrol division, uh, down to Colonel Bain Custer, uh, who is the OIC of all the patrol functions in Escambia County. This process was also implemented in the north end of the county, uh, and we went through much of the same thing in the area of Cantonment, Molino, McDavid, and Century. Uh, where the citizens convinced themselves that because of a restructure, uh, we were pulling deputies from their precincts. Crime stats are actually down in Escambia County for this year. So again, you know, we're trying to revamp and restructure the Escambia County Sheriff's Office to make it more responsive to the citizens throughout our entire county. So bear with us. These are management and leadership decisions that we're making for the benefit of all the citizens of Escambia County. But again, I assure you, you have more patrol coverage in Perdido, not less. Derek asks, uh, does the Castle Doctrine apply to carrying a firearm in his vehicle? Uh, Derek, well, number one, you've kind of dated yourself. The Castle Doctrine uh, was superseded uh, by Florida law to what we now refer to as the Stand Your Ground Law, uh, which was championed by the late uh, Dr. Peden, Darrell Peden, uh, who was a senator uh, from the area of Crestview uh, for Northwest Florida. And uh, Dr. Peden marshaled that uh, legislation through at one time Castle Doctrine applied to your home only, meaning that uh, if I broke into your home, you actually had a legal requirement to retreat to the farthest part of your house and then be able to prove that you were in fear for your life, for you or your family's life, prior to using up to and including force that required deadly force. Now, the Stand Your Ground Law applies to you wherever you are, meaning you can be in a vehicle, you can be outside, you don't have to be on your own personal property in any way, shape, or form whether real property or in a vehicle, in this case, personal property. Uh, Derek, I'm a little reluctant to get into any area that's a fine point of the law. The reason being is, is that, uh, you know, when uh, the few times that we give people legal advice, if you will, which I'm not legally authorized to do, I'm not empowered to do that. I'm not a licensed practicing attorney in the state of Florida. Uh, you know, people then will go out and say, well, you know, I took this action because the sheriff said it was okay. I would strongly recommend that you speak to an attorney about that. Uh, the state attorney will also give you advice on that to let you know specifically where you're protected by the stand your ground law in the state of Florida and under some of the circumstances. The problem that we get into in discussing stand your ground laws is people want to get into scenarios. And then it begins, well, Sheriff, if I was standing here and someone approached me in this manner, am I authorized to use a firearm if I'm you know, licensed to carry in the state of Florida? While again, we don't know every scenario that you're going to meet, and so we can't give you advice on what would be the appropriate way for you to react. And so therefore, again, we always defer those questions to licensed attorneys in the state of Florida. Dale and uh, Ann, we have two questions uh, that came in over the email that basically are asking the same question about handicapped parking. Uh, we're very fortunate. While your question obviously deals with a specific problem that you've identified, uh, we don't get a lot of those calls. We just ran some statistics on that not too long ago. 
Uh, we have parking enforcement specialists, which are uh, volunteers uh, that work at no pay. Uh, we put them through a short uh, training course here, about two weeks long. Uh, you know, and they do wear uniforms and have badges. They're non-armed and non-sworn, by the way, which means they don't have powers of arrest. Uh, but they go out and, and monitor parking, and they uh, issue those citations. If you're in downtown Pensacola, so I'm not sure, you know, what where your question was and what it applies to, the Downtown Improvement Board uh, uh, in the city of Pensacola, within the city proper, uh, actually regulates those parking spaces if you park downtown. Uh, so, you know, again, I'm not sure what your locale is here. But if you see that occur the next time, uh, we would ask that you have no contact with the person that's you know violating the parking space if they don't have a. Uh, remember, you look for two things. Number one, a, a license plate on the back of the car uh, that shows that it's a handicap plate, or they'll have a placard that they're to hang from the rearview mirror of the car, and that's so that an officer that responds can readily identify uh, if the vehicle itself is you know authorized to park there. Uh, again, do not, you know, confront, uh, you know, or contact that person while it's laudable for you to, you know, question that when someone who's obviously able-bodied gets out of a car uh, and walks into a business or a business establishment. Uh, you know, we ask that you not do that. Uh, get the license number and the make of the car. Give us a call. Uh, now, if a, if a uniformed officer has time and is not on a call, they'll actually come by and, of course, they can also enforce uh, parking. But we ask that you ask for a parking enforcement specialist to come by. Uh, that's their one sole mission, uh, is to go out and issue these citations. And, and again, they're not going from call to call to call like law enforcement is. They could be responding to a, you know, an armed disturbance, a domestic violence, a robbery in progress. It could be a whole host of things that they're responding to. The parking enforcement specialists are, are doing only that. So ask for that, that you have a parking issue uh, that you need an officer to respond to. Give them the make and the license number of the vehicle uh, and we'll make contact with that individual as soon as possible. Trust me, I know how irritating it is to see an able-bodied person parked there or someone who doesn't have uh, you know, any markings on the vehicle at all. What I find particularly irritating for me is, <clears throat> is when someone's driving mom or dad's car or they got a plate based upon their mother or father and then they use that to, to get an easy parking space everywhere that they go. Uh, you know, that's a perversion of the system too. Why? Because those spaces are meant for people who truly have a handicap, who have a walker or a cane or have to use crutches or if they have a wheelchair so they can get in and use the wheelchair lift, you know, out of a side door, etc. So it is irritating. Uh, that's unfortunately another you know, sad commentary on the on the de-evolution of society where we don't care enough about, uh, you know, our fellow citizens or our fellow uh, men and women that, uh, you know, we would abuse that privilege. Susan asks, where can she report narcotics activity due to some activity in the area where she lives? Uh, Susan, I, I certainly, uh, you know, commiserate with you uh, if you're living in an area where there is narcotics activity. Uh, I will also tell you, unfortunately, Susan, in today's world that we have narcotics activity in all areas of Escambia County, you know, in the city of Pensacola, in the city of Century, uh, everywhere in our community, throughout the state and throughout our nation. Uh, drugs and drug usage has unfortunately uh, become a fact of our social fabric and culture uh, anymore. So uh, I say that only to let you know that it's not unique to your area. Uh, illegal activity occurs, uh, you know, in our uh, you know highest affluent areas uh, in Pensacola uh, to the lowest. Uh, of course, it's illegal activity, and so we would appreciate you giving us a call. There's a couple of ways that you can do that. Uh, since it's a non-emergency, you can call 436-9620, that is Central Dispatch, uh, ask for no officer contact, ask to speak with a supervisor, and you can report then a specific incidence of narcotics activity. Or again, you can call Crime Stoppers. You can report that anonymously. Ask for no contact, and we will honor that. Uh, again, I will assure you uh, that we will look into this. Now, by the way, immediate action normally doesn't occur with narcotics uh, tips. Why? Because there's a whole process that we have to go through in order to build a case that will assure that the state attorney's office can successfully prosecute those cases. Now, barring uh, you getting any satisfaction from those numbers, Susan, if you feel that you're still not being listened to, please call my office at 436-9512 and you'll speak to Anita. Let her know that you made a call in to the Ask the Sheriff's program and you would like for us to look personally into this thing. But I can guarantee you, Susan, uh, that we will take your complaint and it will be looked into.
Okay, Jerry asked about uh, the uh, differentiation and the, and the splitting of law enforcement duties and responsibilities between the Florida Highway Patrol and the Escambia County Sheriff's Office. And uh, Jerry, you erroneously put in your question that there was only one Florida Highway Patrol officer uh, you know, available to work traffic accidents in Escambia County. Uh, that's not true. Uh, you know, I can tell you that the Florida Highway Patrol has more officers assigned than that. Uh, and we do, in fact, work traffic accidents. It's just rarely. That's an agreement that we have with the state of Florida and specifically with the Florida Highway Patrol, the Department of Transportation, uh, that they are specifically the experts in traffic control and also the working of traffic accidents. To be, uh, again, perfectly uh, candid with you, uh, if there's a vehicular homicide, uh, there's no one within our agency right now in our department that has the background training or qualifications to adequately investigate something such as a vehicular homicide. We depend upon the Florida Highway Patrol to do that. That's part of the, the splitting of responsibilities throughout the different state and local agencies. And also it's a cost saving measure. You know, that way our agency doesn't have to be all things to all people, just like with the Florida uh, Department of Law Enforcement. You know, we don't have a DNA lab. Uh, we don't have certain capabilities here, which saves our local taxpayers money. And we defer that analysis to the, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, just like in the areas of traffic enforcement, et cetera we apply the Florida Highway Patrol to those specific issues. While we can work certain vehicle accidents, we almost always defer to the Florida Highway Patrol because they are the experts in traffic management and accident investigation. Remember, you can also email your questions and ask the sheriff at escambiaso.com. We'll be back next week right here on Blab TV, Tuesday night at 8 p.m.